Hello and welcome to video number 17 of Embolden's video tutorial series. This video is going to be discussing kind of a technical wonky subject uh, that most of the time is not going to affect you at all, um, but is important to know for the few times that it might. Uh, what we're going to talk about is absolute versus relative links. And basically what that refers to are the links, uh, the URLs that you're actually pointing to. So if I click where it says external links here, um, I can see the URL properties down here. I can see all the properties of the link down here actually, although it's hard to see the whole URL in this small field. So I'm gonna click the hyperlink manager here. I could also click it up here to get into um, the hyperlink manager that'll show me the properties for that. So my internal link that went to the about us page on this demo site starts with slash and then about us, what we do, tab ID 260, default.aspx. Um, you can't see the ASPX, but I know it's there. Um, so that is what is called a relative link. It is relative to where you are now on the internet. Um, there's some more technical stuff, but basically this is saying on our site, uh, go to this page. Um, where I had external links, if we click that, we see it's an actual domain and it doesn't have a path after the domain. It's just embolden.com. It's not embolden.com slash something slash tab ID slash number slash default ASPX. Um, so this is an absolute link. Um, the easiest way to think about it is relative links uh, are pointing to something else on your site. Absolute links are specifying what site to go to and then displaying the path. And that may not be the easiest concept, but it's probably the simplest I can boil that down to. The only time this is really going to matter for you is if you are working on your development server. So let's say Embolden builds a website for you or puts a blog in your website. And rather than putting it on your live site, we copy your site down to a development server. And that is called something like, you know, myfoundation.embolden.com. Um, so you have a development site and you want to create links on your homepage or on different places around the site that point to blog entries or point to articles or things like that, that you cannot do with the custom links tool. The custom links tool will only link to pages and it will always use relative links. Um, so if, if you are in a situation where we say, oh, you're linking to a blog, that's not really a page. Um, you have to do it as an external link where you're copying the whole URL. If you copy the whole URL, including the domain, the HTTP colon slash slash myfoundation.embolden.com and link to it, when your site goes live, when we say, okay, blog's done, we're launching this, this to your live site and it goes up there and people click on those links, those links will not go to the blog on your live site. It will try to go back to your development site because it specifies right in that link, the absolute URL that's, you know, the, the myfoundation.embolden.com. Um, so generally what you want to do is just make sure if you're in a situation where you are told you have to link to other pages on your site as if they were external links uh, to just delete the domain. So delete the HTTP colon slash slash myfoundation.embolden.com and you just want to start like this does, uh, like this internal links example does with the slash and then whatever the first thing is. Another little secret about DNN is if you have this URL structure, anything before slash tab ID does not matter. Um, when the system is, is serving up a page to somebody, it looks for tab ID and that's the page ID number. And then sort of look for that look for whatever number comes up after that and says, that's the page I'm looking for. Um, and this is why linking to blogs and articles needs to be done separately because what you'll find is every single blog entry will have the same tab ID. They will all point to tab ID 400 and something, and that's your blog page. And then after that number, it would say slash blog ID, and then it would have a separate number that's the individual blog entries ID number. Um, so long story short, absolute versus relative links. If you are linking to other pages on your website, you always want to use relative links. You do not want to include the full domain to another page on your website. So enough of the technical wonkiness. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about making links to an email address, and then we're gonna start talking about documents, images, and some other fun stuff. <laughs> 